We know medicine and biology have helped cure many diseases. What we hope now is to go even further. As we begin to understand how cells are made in the body, how stem cells work and how DNA controls them, we expect to make new and better treatments. Thomas Graff has devoted his career to understanding cells. His team investigate how DNA controls cells and whether it is ever possible to convert one cell type into another. This could have implications beyond the laboratory. It could mean that we could take diseased cells and change them to become healthy cells. Or, if we lose brain cells, take cells from our muscles and turn them into what we lack. But first of all, we need to understand exactly how different cells are made in the body and the cells we know most about are in blood. The blood cell system is comprised of different types of specialized cells. Each blood cell type has a specific function. For example, the red blood cells carry hemoglobin to the different parts in our body which bring the oxygen which our cells need. The macrophages uh, eat and engulf bacteria and dead cells. And B cells or B lymphocytes are the cells which produce the antibodies which attack invading pathogens. The question is, what makes the cells what they are? What controls their identity? We already know that each different blood cell is produced from the same original blood or hematopoietic stem cell. Hematopoietic stem cells are the cells that produce all the different blood cell types in the body. They're extremely rare. There's only about one in 10,000 in the bone marrow where they actually live. What makes stem cells unique is that they cannot only produce the different types of specialized cells, but they can also make more of themselves. They can self-renew. So hematopoietic stem cells, they live in little nests or niches surrounded by other cells, which are called stromal cells, and by the blood flow which pr provides nutrients and signals which will activate mechanisms within the stem cells. Blood stem cells are able to give rise to all the differentiated cell type in the blood. One way to help us imagine this is to see a model that shows blood stem cells as a pool on top of the mountain. Each cell in the pool has the potential to become any cell type in the blood. When an event happens, like an injury, the stem cells are pushed over the bridge of the mountain and they begin their path downwards. As it progresses downhill, various paths diverge. The cell loses some potential and gains specific properties. This process is tightly controlled to make sure the cell becomes the one the body needs. When the cell finally reaches the bottom of the mountain, it does acquire its final identity. So the first pool immediately downstream of the hematopoietic stem cells, these are like parent cells that can make all the different types of cells, are still multipotent. They can form the different blood cell types, but they have lost the ability to self-renew. Therefore, they are no longer stem cells. This system is so robust in the body 
that we can take stem cells from one person and transplant them into someone whose blood system is faulty or damaged, and the repair will be for life. Blood stem cell transplants have been used since the 1950s, but it's only now that we understand the mechanism. Cassia, who is three, was born without B and T cells in his blood. Cassia padece una inmunodeficiencia combinada severa, que es una enfermedad uh, de origen hereditario y que lo que pasa es que no, tiene, no, no tenía defensas en la sangre. Por lo tanto, era vulnerable a cualquier infección que, que pudiera tener. Uh, es causada por una mutación de un cromosoma y, y en su caso particular no tenía linfocitos T y los linfocitos B uh, no funcionaban correctamente. Era el déficit de una proteína. Él no tenía ese sistema inmune, es decir, sus linfocitos T eran cero y una vez diagnosticado de la enfermedad, pues nos dijeron que el único tratamiento que había era un trasplante de, de médula. La esperanza de vida que nos dieron era de dos años y en un ambiente un poquito estéril, si no, no podría sobrevivir. Once the donor's healthy stem cells produce a new blood system, it functions in the same ordered way as it would in any healthy person, to make sure the right numbers of all the different blood cells are made in the body throughout life. What happens after transplantation is that the whole blood cell system has been replaced. We have injected the patient with uh, hematopoietic stem cells from a donor, which now find their niche in the bone marrow. And you can imagine in this mountain analogy that, again, there are healthy stem cells sitting on the top of a mountain, which now can form the whole blood cell system and builds up a, a healthy new blood cell system within the patient. The question is, how does this work? How do stem cells know what to become? How do they know to make red blood cells, macrophages, lymphocytes, etc.? The answer lies in how genes in the DNA in the nucleus of the cell are switched on and off. Each DNA strand consists of four small, tiny ring-like molecules, which in an abbreviated form are called ACGT, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. And these four building blocks exists in different combinations and sequences, like letters in an alphabet, which can form sentences, paragraphs, articles, and entire books. So the nucleus of each cell contains DNA, this famous molecule, which consists of two intertwined strands that contain the genetic information which is then packed in 23 chromosomes in human cells. If we would isolate the DNA from a single cell and would pull the ends apart, it would actually form a rod of two meters length, which is enormous in comparison to the size of a cell. This is because each DNA strand contains a huge amount of information packaged up into genes. Each gene is a section of a DNA strand. The DNA can do two things. It can self-replicate and produce more of itself, or it can code for proteins. Each cell contains 25,000 genes and each gene is code for a specific protein. All the different proteins have different functions in the body. So all specialized cells like neurons, blood cells, 
muscle cells, etc., have the same amount of DNA and the same number of genes, uh, which is about 25,000 in mammals, but they only use the information for a subset of these genes, uh, which are important for their functions. So the differences between, let's say, a lymphocyte and a macrophage is not that they contain different genes, but which genes are active. It turns out that there is still a lot that we have to learn how these proteins are made, how they function, uh, how they are stabilized. The key is to understand how the right set of genes for each cell type get switched on and off. For Cassia, who was lacking the right genes to create functional B and T cells, the only way was to find blood from a donor whose DNA was intact and so whose stem cells were capable of creating every sort of blood cell. Empezaron a hacer la búsqueda de donante y no se encontró ningún donante vivo, digamos, compatible con él. Y entonces empezó la búsqueda en los bancos de, 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 de sangre de cordón umbilical, de células madre de, de todo el mundo. Y finalmente pues encontró un, un cordón compatible americano y se le hizo el trasplante de, de médula. Mi mamá ha tenido fepatones en mascareta, porque no podía hacer fepatones. Tenemos hasta seis meses que no podían hacer cap -cató. Tiene que haber compatibilidad al máximo, si puede ser al 100% entre el donante y el receptor, debido a que puede haber un rechazo. En su caso, era una compatibilidad de 9 sobre 10. Bueno, ahora mismo está, está en recuperación inmunológica, pero en principio está bien, está en hace vida normal, va a la escuela, ha cogido infecciones, pero las normales de los niños de su edad. Tiene linfocitos del donante, la, la mayoría, porque él era incapaz de fabricarlos, pero tiene un pequeño porcentaje de, de linfocitos B suyos que en principio no, no funcionan. Ahora están estudiando si se entienden los de él y los del donante y si estos linfocitos serán capaces de, de generar pues, las inmunoglobulinas, que parece que también que sí, porque hace un año que no le ponen tratamiento y, y él está bien. Cassia's transplant has rebuilt his blood system from the original cell, the stem cell. By doing experiments with two types of blood cell, the B cell and the macrophage, Thomas Graff's group, together with colleagues around the world using different cell systems, have helped uncover mechanisms hidden inside the nucleus that control the final blood cell's fixed identity. In each cell nucleus, swimming around the, the chromosomes, are a class of molecules which are called transcription factors. They are actually quite abundant and they are characterized by their ability to find sites on the DNA to which they can bind, they can dock to them. In every cell, there are a lot of different transcription factors. Transcription factors are protein able to recognize a specific sequence within the DNA. The binding of transcription factor to the DNA can switch uh, genes on and off. After the binding of the transcription factor to the DNA, an enzyme called RNA polymerase is needed to produce RNA molecules that codes for proteins. Two proteins are responsible for the different types of cell types. So there are the proteins which instruct the cell fate. It seemed that cell identity is set by transcription factors. 
macrophage transcription factors, control genes needed in macrophages, B cell transcription factors, control genes needed in B cells, and so on. Thomas Graff's laboratory isolated different transcription factors that were present only in B cells or macrophages. Graff's experiment tested what would happen if he put the macrophage transcription factor into B cells. Could these cells that have reached their final identity still change? Different specialized cell types in the body are actually very stable. A macrophage is always a macrophage, a B cell is always a B cell. But with the mechanisms that we have learned, we can now use these transcription factors to change cell identity. We can now introduce them into cells in which they are not normally expressed, and we can force the cells to change and make, for example, a B cell into a macrophage. Basically what we do is we use a virus to um, deliver the protein that we want to be expressed into the B cells. And together with the protein we use as a reporter gene another protein that is green. So once the cells will be infected with this virus, they will turn into green. And after two to three days, if this protein is overexpressed in the B cells, they will be converting into macrophages, which is what we see here. After three days from the induction of the B cells, they convert into rapidly moving macrophages. We can recognize them because they aggregate and then begin to eat all the bacteria in the culture. We can put a piece of DNA which corresponds to the gene of the transcription factor CDP alpha, which is normally active in macrophages, into a B cell. It's like putting a Trojan horse into this B cell. And now this uh, transcription factor activates macrophage-specific genes, while it, at the same time it represses B cell-specific genes. This coordinate activation of the macrophage program and the extinction of the B cell program results in a complete conversion of these two cell types. This experiment has shown that it is, after all, possible to change a cell's fate. We call it transdifferentiation. Following the steps of the first transdifferentiation experiments done by Harold Weintraub's lab in the 1980s, Thomas was able to produce macrophages from B cells by changing a single transcription factor. The B cell has been pushed out of its pool and propelled across to a different pool. To understand what's going on at the molecular level, we have to go back to the multipotent progenitors, these cells which are the parent cells for many different types of cells. These cells contain actually in their nucleus a mixture of different transcription factors, each of them having a, a different specificity, each of them regulating a different subset of genes. And so there is a battle of dominance which has to be resolved. Transcription factor dominance is regulated by external signals, by the microenvironment, by the niche. And it uh, consists in the binding of small molecules, so-called cytokines, to receptors that are on the surface of these cells, or the interaction of these receptors with molecules on other cell types. And these signals have an effect on the balance of the transcription factors inside the cell. The way they do it is they leads to the increase in the amounts of one particular transcription factor, which now becomes dominant, and reduces the amount of all the other transcription factors that are important for other cell types. These transcription factors that are now abundantly expressed in this cell dictate the cell's fate. For example, 
they produce a lot of lysozyme in a cell that becomes a macrophage, and they produce a lot of antibodies in a cell that becomes a B cell, and other transcription factors that in principle could have made other cell types are now repressed in these cells, and therefore we have now a locked state. Thomas's theory is that transcription factor dominance may explain how cells find their roots down the mountain. Scientists are testing this at the moment. What we do know is that these transitions often require several transcription factors, not just one. By understanding how genes control cell fate, we hope to apply this knowledge to the clinic and improve patient-specific treatments. We are working on that, and that's our hope for the future. Thomas Graff has shown that blood cells can be converted, and how this is done. Francesca and Alessandro and Bruno and others will take this forward. Even though it sounds like science fiction, we might be able to create cells a la carte by taking a biopsy from a patient and making any cell type that we would like to produce to replace a cell that is defective in the body. By generating patient-specific cells, immune rejection can be avoided. With the rapid progress in the transdifferentiation research field in, in recent years and months, uh, it seems possible that we will eventually learn what transcription factor combinations are required to specify all the different cell types in the body. Graf and his team have shown how some blood cells can have their identity changed. It seems this principle could be true for all cells. By unlocking these biological secrets, we may be able to create new and even personalized medicines. These are the challenges for the next generation of science explorers.